Hi there and welcome back. So we're gonna move on to our next chapter, which is chapter 18 on negotiation, managing difficult um, negotiations. And let's see if I can share my screen with you. All right, so chapter 18, managing negotiations. And as you know, all of this time, all the chapters, we've been coming to you from McGraw-Hill Education, uh, text on negotiation by Roy Luigi, Bruce Berry, and David Sandros. And um, let's see, so we, so we start our slideshow. We can see that, uh, again, resolving differences means managing negotiation, difficult negotiations. And managing the shadow negotiation and social contract means the shadow negotiation occurs in parallel and determines how the negotiation will proceed. Whereas the result is a social contract of how to proceed, who has influence and power and the boundaries of the negotiations. Negotiators should discuss and create alignment in the social contract. The social contract is discussed and negotiated, not assumed. There are three strategic lever levers to help navigate the shadow negotiations. There are power moves, incentives, pressure tactics, and allies, and there's process moves. Alter the process, search a agenda or consequences, so, such as um, alter the process, such as agenda and sequences or sequencing, and appreciative moves, breaking cycles of contentness. So responding to the other side hard, um, uh, other side's hard distributive tactics. Hard distributive tactics are, dis are hard tactics are distributive and used to pressure other negotiators to do something not in their best interest. So call them on it. Tactful discussion is the first step in converting the negotiator. Ignoring them, a tactic ignored is a tactic defeated usually. Responding kind, appropriate sometimes, uh, but tends to escalate the conflict. Offer to change to move to a more productive method. So recognize the tactic, raise the issue and question them, negotiate over it. So responding to uh, ir irrationality. So the key to managing the situation is to understand why. It may be a hard bargaining tactic, or it may be, or it may not be. It may be, or it may not be. They are uniform. They have hidden constraints, or they have hidden interest. Use caution when labeling a negotiator as irrational, as they typically are not, and labels don't help really the negotiation process, guys. They help labels help in no situation, really. You gotta be careful with the labels and not really the best thing is just not to use labels. When truly when um don't use the labeling, okay? Just recognize or the other side and um use truly irrational uh, seriously considering using your banta, imposing a solution if you have the power or seeking the third party's assistance. Responding when the other side has really uh, more power, you have to power imbalances and re represent danger to collaboration and negotiators really should consider four facets here. The first is protect themselves protect the bottom line, but remain open to creative solutions. The second tactic is cultivate their best banter and make, by doing this, you make the other party aware of it. Number three, formulate a trip wire alert system. And you do this by a signal for when talks are close to the walkaway point or the banter. And number four, Correct the power imbalance. Low power parties, uh, talking power, high power parties, given power, and third parties managing the transfer and the balance of that power. So you have low power, high power, and the third is in the middle. 
So um, really you want to, when there's a special problem of handling ultimately, the ultimatum, an ultimatum is really an attempt to induce compliance or force concessions and typically have three components. So an ultimatum is a demand or a sense of urgency, a threat or punishment. And one type of ultimatum is an exploding offer, a no-win deal. Attempts to force a negotiator into premature agreement. Limits the other negotiator's choice among offers or banta. One possible response, the four point gamut, is yes, but when the initiator is perceived unethical or ignores appeals to reason, when the respondent needs more time to consider the basic offer, and when there are issues central to the deal that need clarification. So when you respond to anger, you do that by doing this. Strategies for managing angry negotiators include, try to understand guys why the other party is angry and give voice to their anger. Set, sidestep the power of the emotions and try to help them understand their underlying interests. When you're dealing with anger, when dealing with anger is unpleasant and not easy to manage, respond in a calm and professional manner and responding with anger will likely escalate the situation. Sometimes a break is needed. So when you're responding when the other side is really being um, difficult, Yuri's breakthrough approach uses five stage process for a counterintuitive pattern of responding. The five steps are don't react, go to the balcony. Number two, disarm them, step to their side. Number three, change the game guys. Don't reject, but refrain. Number four, make it easy to say yes. Build them a golden bridge. And step five, make it hard to say no and bring them to their senses, not to their knees. All right, senses, not to the knees. So when you respond to difficult people, everyone can exhibit difficult, difficult behaviors at times. So some people are invariably difficult and their behaviors follow a pattern. What is difficult behavior to one person may not be to another. So labeling someone difficult may say more than more about you. Difficult people behave like they do as they get results. Giving in to them reinforces their behavior. Negotiators must counterbalance the power these behaviors give them to those who use them. So having conversations with difficult people include preparation, understand your comfort zone. There will be three conversations, the what happened, the feelings, and the identity conversations. To prepare, you can visualize and practice the conversation and assemble them a team to compensate for your weaknesses. Now, managing the conversation, when you do that by clarity, use language as precise as possible, all right? And tone, the nonverbal aspect of the conversation should be neutral and temperate, temperate phrasing carefully choosing a language to deliver the message that will provoke the other side, that will not provoke the other side. Duplicitous negotiations. These occur when negotiators negotiate but have no intention of reaching an agreement. This may occur because their banter is very good or to stall for time, appear cooperative, or obtain information or influence their position. Still, duplicitous negotiators are difficult to detect. Traditionally, ZOPA or their perceived zone of potential agreement, that's ZOPA, perceived zone of potential agreement, needs to overlap and failure to reach agreement is due to no overlap. The best way to identify duplicitous negotiators starts with solid planning and good understanding of the ZOPA, the zone of potential agreement. After probing for ZOPA boundaries, again, the zone of potential agreement, if none or forthcoming, the negotiator must consider they are, if they're dealing with the duplicitous negotiator. 
And that's it for our chapter 18. And um, we had a great time today discussing, negotiating, resolving differences and managing difficult, um, difficult negotiations. Take care. <laughs>